shalom. Love. It must be a flame. It must be a fire. It must be passion. It must be moving. It must be a verb. It must be alive. If it's not alive, it's dead. Then it's nothing. It's empty. It's clinging symbol. It's time that we make sure, pinch ourselves to make sure that we are alive in love and that we can embrace it and open up our hearts, our heart of hearts, because deep calls unto deep. So praise the Lord, and it's time that the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to all of our hearts that his message of Malachi 3.1 is his most passionate message that he ever uttered out of his mouth. That the word of love came forth in the garden of Gethsemane praying for our oneness. And he knew he would send that oneness as the word of his message that prepares his own way of Malachi 3.1. Deep calls unto deep. And he's calling all of us to come out and f f away from the safety of the shores. He is the priceless pearl of great reward. Our excellence of treasure. Our treasure of excellence. But if we will not allow our love to be passionate and to transcend belief we must get out of uh, out of our the box that we have put us and God into if we do not leave our comfort place our comfort zone then we have, will never get beyond ourselves and we are made to transcend and be overcomers of uh, his for he is the living victory in all people who are victorious for he is victory, he is love, he is the blessed, the beloved, and the adored, our majesty and majesties. So let the followers of his light depart from all unloving ways, of all thoughts, of all words, of all deeds, uh, and let it happen like a swift rushing wind cleanses the plain. Who will come and feed the master's household meat while the master is away, Christ asked. And it was his Elijah task servant who would restore all things. Line by line, precept by precept, would this be written plainly on the tablets so all those who readeth it may run. It's time to get in motion in order to save this earth from certain death and doom. The days of Malachi 4, 6, utter destruction. Unless the hearts of the fathers turn to the children, children to the fathers, because of God's message that he loves us all equally and that he has all of our backs. I will be your God. You will be my people. I will forgive your iniquity. Never remember it. Sending Satan to the pit for a thousand years by that word given for the latter days. And it says, and this shall be considered in the latter days. So you don't think that could be the message since it's the latter days? It is the message of the latter days. So praise God and let all those who have their souls to wax strong in the holy law of love, let them say even though they are weak, they can be strong in him. Even though they're poor, they can be rich unto overflowing because his love is a great ocean of benevolence. His charity, his magnificence of his beneficence, he is the beneficent, he is the all-merciful one. And in the days when those words come forth, I will be your God, you will be my people, according to the word of Hebrews 8, all faith on earth would be obsolete. Even Muhammad said the same thing. He said, the day is coming, there'll be no more left of the Quran except its outward form, and my people will belong to another that sounds like Islam. That's Islam, Isaiah 62, 2, Israel's new name, because they've inherited all the Christians and the Islamics, Isaiah 54, 3, inheriting all mankind, because God has always been the Lord God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27, declares that. That is restoration. And so I come forth with the refiner's fire of love to blaze within our hearts, to be days burning as an oven, to get all the religious people like stuck in an elevator and they're not gonna know what to do. But God's word is true. 
and it transcends all that we have believed for our righteousness is as filthy rags and so has all of our understandings right or wrong is of no importance because it's not important what we've done for him it's what he has done for us so um it's time to realize he was slain before the foundation of the earth for all. And so for unto all those who will dance before their Lord, uh, let them well understand that the Lord will always gather together those who are his, even as a bird gathers its eggs together under its wings. And the Lord says, and let all those loosen from their bondage of their own religiosity come to realize that God's loving divine acts, uh, it acts mightily with unyielded flesh. Uh, and the, he's wanting to people to know that he will allow his unlimited strength to flow into us just like Samson, if only we will believe his love is made to burn as a bright torch, an inferno of passion, compassion, empathy and sympathy for one another because we are angels in the flesh and we must realize that for all the creation has been groaning with great expectation for that revelation of who we are so praise the lord and the lord god says i am the unquenchable light the one without end who brings forth the immeasurable age of ages and swiftly changes gloominess of heart into cheerfulness, darkened grief into the brightest joy, and dead souls change them into beaming spirits of life, blowing forth like a supernova, letting their love outshine. And whoever loves the world has only found a graveyard because it invites people of no love to linger thereby and to perish by the ways of the unforgivable sin of letting your love die. And uh, so uh, whoever loves worldliness becomes a corpse and they're letting their love become desensitized so that they can become like a, a cooked frog in a pot uh, that doesn't even notice the water is getting a little bit too hot. So if you want to be a cooked goose, just don't stir your love up unto overflowing. But Christ shall save this world through our love. His sons and daughters, Emmanuel, God in the flesh, came to a world of angels in the flesh. Jesus said we are gods in the flesh. We are gods in John 10, and that's exactly what we are, angels in the flesh. We are mangels, that is our name. And all the creation was gro groaning for that revelation now it has been satisfied and uh, now the expectation is worthwhile because once you realize that we're divine all of us created divine and god has loved us all equally and all whoever does not love the uh, whoever does not love the grave only loves the world as it will become of such a one the present world is not even worthy because it's time to be a person of love to shine we're made in his image and we are like a drop from the great ocean of love that is god and every single drop of us has every single characteristic of the image of our father from whence we came and every drop of that great ocean only desires to go back from whence we came and so shall that be that we evermore shall be with the Lord so verily verily the Lord says unto you he says true love is the fulfilling of the law love is of God and is God God is love whosoever loves not knows not God the Lord says, I am the good, the beautiful, and the true, and my name is love, says Isa Yeshua, Jesus, our roaring lion of Zion, who's roaring louder than ever before. Peace, be still from he who is the preparation of peace, sender, because he is our living peace. And if any man believes in me, says the Lord, he shall not die, but he shall live eternally. And the Lord says, as in Adam all die, so within me shall all be made alive. 
Blessed, therefore, are the dead who die in me, says says Isa Yeshua, Jesus, the living word of God. Uh, for all those who die in him are made perfect by his love, his image and likeness. And the Lord says, and unto the living, let your love be as the sun, which shines upon all creatures of the earth and does not favor one blade of grass for another. And that kind of divine love will flow as a fountain from brother to brother, from mother to mother, and over uh, flood over brothers of other mothers, and as it is spent, so shall it be replenished, says the Lord, for love is eternal and far stronger than the currents of the deepest waters. And if a person has not love, says the Lord, he doth build a wall between him and all others around, and therein he dwell, dwells in loneliness and much pain, or he can become as an angry whirlpool, uh, being loveless, and that will cause him to be sucked down into the depths, uh, and all will be sucked down if they float too near. And for there is a vortex, a whirlpool, pulling us down, pulling us down, the worldly affections and our own inner greed and our lack of, of love. We must dare to let our inner peacocks to show. If you've thought yourself as a dove, it's peacock time. Or if you've thought yourself as a raven, you got a peacock in there. Just let your love be stirred up. And it's time we quit arguing over silly stuff like love. Love is love, and uh, never again should anyone argue. And the Lord says, the heart is, is a sea with mighty waves. Every single heart filled with love is a heart of love, and wisdom, wisdom tempers it. And uh, it's as the warm sun breaks through the clouds and quiets the restless sea. And the Lord says, he who has found peace with his, his brothers and his brethren has entered into the kingdom of love and is already there. And he shall see God's face, or she shall see God's face. And the Lord says, Know therefore that this peace is with your mind. So desire that peace with your heart and fulfill that peace with your body and with actions. For actions speak volumes. Ah, uh, love, we must let it go free. So the Lord says this, They who readily burst into weeping are like a horse that goes faster the more lightly he is, 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 is laden and rid. And we must go forward. Christ is the white horseman of the Apocalypse, Revelation 6. And as the white horseman, he challenges and will put down the speckled, the black, and the red horseman, the, the famine, the pestilence, the disease, the war, all of it. The spirit of love will overcome. And he goes forth on that great white cloud, and he has a bow, and he needed an arrow. And the servant of Isaiah 49, I was shown myself there 30 years ago. I've known my identity all these years. And I am the hidden arrow that he will use to accomplish his purposes. And I tell you truly, believe in what I'm saying or not, listen or not, it doesn't matter. In this world, he will have his way of love for the storm of unloving ignorance is but dust under his feet. And by his, his sunshine of him arising as the sun of love to destroy all gross darkness of, of stupidity, um, it's the understanding that has to go away that there's never been love on planet Earth unless it was unconditional. There is nothing divine about love that has conditions and manipulations and uh, strings attached. That's not love. People, if you like a flower, you're going to just pluck it. But if you love that flower, you're going to take care of it. You're going to water it. So it's time to realize that the weeping of a sinner, an uh, unloving person, because that's the only sin that will not be forgiven is the unforgivable sin. Jesus said all sin will be forgiven except unforgivable sin, even sin against him. So if sin, if it's a sin not to believe in him, he said even that would be 
forgiven. But he said you got to be as a child. So know that the weeping of an unloving person uh, to be is like that of a father who weeps over his son who is close unto death if, if, if a person's head is not screwed on properly by love. And the madness of man that sweeps in for unloving people, it, it weeps over the body from which the soul departed. Uh, we grieve over people that are gone, but uh, we don't grieve over the soul from which through sin could be departed from the mercy of God if they were unloving people. So praise God that there is no purgatory, my friends. There is only love and there is no judgment day as it has been figured. We are angels in the flesh and it has been given to us to judge the angels in the hereafter. And for that reason, God too has not judging us just as he's not judging the others. That's why he says, I will forgive your iniquity and I will never remember it. Verily, verily, I, Daniel, uh, the Lord's servant of Isaiah 41, his end time Shiloh, whose eyes are red and dull of wine. Don't, don't say that Jesus was Shiloh or you're saying he's an alcoholic, people. Three witnesses in the Bible prove an alcoholic would come in the latter days. Uh, Habakkuk 2.2, 2, one transgressed by wine, whose soul is not upright, but the just will live by my faith. The alcoholic uh, Shiloh, whose eyes are red and dull of wine, but the just, again, uh, he holds the scepter of all authority. The alcoholic Zechariah 3, uh, read, it's the appointment of an alcoholic uh, who sends forth the flying scroll, the everlasting gospel of which I am reading. And as it is written, this was written plainly on the tablets, so all those who readeth it may run. It's time to run, for the kingdom age is ahead if we will allow our love to become passionate. If not, we will burn in the cinders of a world destroyed by our own hatred and our own unloving, stingy ways. And know that for to everyone who has, more love shall be given. But from the one who does not have love, even that which little he has will be taken away by his own foolishness. God never judges us. We judge ourselves by our foolish, selfish thinking. So it's time to receive God's word of love. So give ear, therefore, in this hour. For I tell you some things that are certain absolute so that this world might finally have a compass so that we know where we're going and i know in in, in our heart how many rams shall become uh lambs and the lord says and so shall it be that i shall save them through the power of the word of love and the gates of hell and will never prevail over my word of love and for he alone can cut time short so that all flesh shall not be forfeited, uh, as he said in Matthew 24, 22. And so it was then a moment of wow, and it was a moment of whistling wind, and it was blowing ever so softly upon me. And as I heard this in the spirit, it was a time of awesome. And it was an instant where within a moment of a moment's moment, I then felt the most beautiful breath of Jehovah Nisi, a banner of love over one and all of us. And it was blowing upon me as gently as the rays of being down upon the earth. And of the fire, I can really tell no man. And of the flame, uh, of the flame knows no man aside from the twelve who went before Christ, only his apostles, of which I am one. And uh, imagine one of the apostles that had YouTube. What do you think they would have done, people? They would have had 5,000 videos, too. And I've just started. Most men are, are getting ready to retire at my age. And me, I'm just starting because I can't stop praising his holy name. And of the flicker of that sun of righteousness, it knows no limit, for there are even some things that God does not know. For he knows no man that he does not love, and Yahweh knows no sin that he does not hate. And he does not know of any better plan of salvation than Christ Jesus offered to all, because he was slain before the foundation of the earth for all of us. 
So praise God that the atonement has been over all mankind and hatred can now be wiped away by the essence of love if only we will open our hearts. So praise the Lord and do not hide this blessing of this channel under a bushel. Uh, let it free, share it with friends. Uh, this is the only bulletproof uh, channel on the internet. No one can condemn what I'm saying because I'm preaching the Word of God. And the Word of God has never been a respecter of men having favorites. God has never had favorites. Uh, if anyone thinks that God loves them more than them, regardless of whatever, they're just absolutely not understanding the Word of God. It took Elijah to come forth, and I hold absolute authority. His love wins. It just always will.